الحمد لله الحمد لله يا ضعف ما حمده جميع خلقه كما يحبه ويرضى اللهم صل على محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وسلم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأحل الأكرة من لساني يفقه قولي ربنا يسر ولا تعسر وتمم بالخير وبك نستعين يا فتاح سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم جعلنا دعاة إليك وإلى رسولك أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك لك وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا وعظيمنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا وداعيا إلى الله بإذنه وسراجا منيرا قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا توبوا إلى الله توبة نصوحا إلى آخر الآية حزرين الكرام أمر بالأسملي First of all, we give our praise and our thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all the favors and bounties Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed on us. Uh, we send salat and salam on his last and final messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We thank Allah for gathering us here today in this special place on this special day, observing this special ritual which is the Juma Salat. Questioning has always been something important, has always been a unique tool in unlocking the secrets of ilm and secret of knowledge. So much so that one of the Tabi'een, Mahroon bin Mehran, he says, that asking questions is half of ilm, half of knowledge. <clears throat> to ask questions, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he tells us that two individuals will never learn. That two persons will never increase their ilm, will never increase their knowledge, will just remain with one set of knowledge, and will not go beyond that. And the two persons that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, one is mustahin, someone who is shy. Someone who is shy will be so shy that he will not want to ask any questions. So even if something is doubtful, someone does not understand something because of that shyness and because of might feel embarrassed, thinking to himself, if I ask, I might feel ashamed, I might feel embarrassed. They keep that to themselves. Keep that doubt to themselves. They will keep that doubt to themselves and they will not increase their knowledge. And the second is mutakabbir, someone who is arrogant and proud, who feels that they know it all. I know it. I don't need to ask any questions. The Prophet says these two people will never learn. They will never increase their ilm. They will never increase their knowledge. Allah Himself tells us in the Quran, Fas'alu ahlu dhikri in kuntum la ta'alamun. Allah says, Ask those with knowledge if you do not know. And like that, we have seen the companions, 
they always used to ask the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As soon as something comes up in their mind that they are doubtful, even though they could have used their analysis and tried to analyze it themselves, they will still use the opportunity to ask the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to clarify it. And many other tabi'eens are like that. It has always gone on that those who are doubtful would ask those who know in order to clarify their doubts. Once Imam Shafi, alayhi rahmah, the great Imam, he was asked a question. And his reply, when we look at his reply, was, was filled with knowledge. So today, inshallah, we look at the question being posed to Imam Shafi, alayhi rahmah, and we'll look at his response and we'll try to benefit from that depth of knowledge that Imam Shafi alayhi rahmah had. The question that was asked by someone to Imam Shafi, he says, Dalluna ala wajib wal awjab, wa ajibun wa a'jab, wa sa'bun wa as'ab, wa qareebun wa aqrab. He asked him, O Imam, highlight to us or guide us to what is wajib and what is awjab. Wajib which means that which is incumbent, that which is necessary, that which is essential for us. And what is awjab? Awjab is isbut of deal, which is known as the superlative. So what is even more incumbent? To tell us of what is incumbent, what is wajib, and what is even more wajib, more incumbent. Wajibun wa'ajab. Tell us what is amazing, what is astonishing, wa'ajab, and what is even more astonishing than that. And tell us what is sa'bun, what is difficult, and what is as'ab, what is even more difficult than that, which you have mentioned. And what is qareeb and what is near, and what is even akra, what is even nearer than that which you have just mentioned that is near. So this was a question asked to Imam Shafi. And Imam Shafi, his reply was asked for wajib, what is incumbent, what is necessary for us is ayyatubu, is for us to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As human beings, we are da'if, we are weak. As Allah says, Qulikal insanu da'ifa, mankind has been created weak. Kullubna Adam khata, all the sons of Adam are sinners. Wa khayl al khata'inata wa but the best of those who commit sins are those who repent. So it is incumbent for us to repent. Whenever we falter, whenever we err, whenever we make a mistake, we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu tubu ila Allahi tawbatan nasuha. Allah says, O you who believe, tubu ila Allah. Turn in repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tawbatan nasuha with a sincere repentance. When you turn to Allah, you beg Allah for forgiveness, be sincere. Be sincere that you want to be forgiven. Be sincere that you will try your best not to repeat that action. <clears throat> and then as long as you do that, Allah says, perhaps, Asa rabbukum ayyukaffir ankum sayyi'adikum wa yudkhilukum jannat. He says that maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you your sins and enter you into jannah. So there's a must. We all know our own shortcomings. See, Imam Shafi is saying it is, out, it is wajib, it is incumbent for us to repent to Allah. And you have until the angel of death approaches you. When you see the angel of death, there's no, there's no more repentance. The doors of tawbah is closed. So all now we have the time to turn to Allah, he says it is wajib. That is every night we should make it a practice that we repent to Allah before we go to sleep. You should do that as a practice that before we go to our bed we pray two rakat salat of tawbah and ask oh Allah forgive me for the sins that I've committed during the day. 
So in case Allah takes our life in the night, we have just repented for all our sins during the day. And if we do this as a habitual thing, it will become a norm in our life to always repent. So that is wajib. Now, as for what is even more incumbent than that, what is awjab? He says, what is awjab is tarq al -dhunub. What is more incumbent is abandoning sin. So it is necessary, important for us to repent. But what is even more important for us to try our best to leave off sins. Tarq al -dhunub. Sometimes we look at sin as major and minor and we feel satisfied with ourselves because we are not doing any major sins and we fill our lives with minor sins and we continue to do those minor sins feeling this is nothing, this is just a small sin but those minor sins will add up just like every dollar will add up every minor sin is going to add up until in reality on the day of judgment it will become something major so he said what is even more incumbent on us is to try our best to stay away from sins when you see a sin there you see something wrong <clears throat> you see that this is a, a haram action try your best to stay away from it that is even more important for us as human beings and as Muslims and then he says as for ajib the question was, tell me what is ajib and what is ajab. Tell me what is amazing and what is even more amazing than that. He says, ask for what is ajib, what is amazing. It's a dahrufi tasarrufihi. He says, it is time and its movements. The alternation of time. The time is coming and the time is going. We have today. By the time you know it, today is completed. We are already in Saturday. By the time you know it, it's already next week, Friday again, another Juma next week. You want to know where that week has gone. He says, that is amazing how time just flies. A year will go by like that. Many of us who are 50 years, 60 years, you look back and you want to know where the 50 years gone. Where has it gone? 60 years, where have we gone? He says, that is ajib. Not realizing, look how fast time is flying. But he says, what is even more ajib? What is even more, <coughs> more amazing than the time going by? He says, it's ghaflatun nasu anha. He says, what is even more amazing is how people are unaware of the time going away. How people are so heedless as the time goes by. So it's astonishing to see you, you have recognized your time is going by, you recognize you're getting old, but still, you're still one way, you have not changed your life. You have not corrected your shortcomings, you have not corrected your faults. You allow it to just continue to go away and go away from you. Allow it to slip until you see the angel of death. And this is the case for many human beings. They are so caught up in the dunya, they allow the time to go by. And even at certain juncture in their life, they even celebrating the going away of it. Celebrating bodies, the bodies are going away. Celebrating I'm 50 years old, I'm 60 years old, but yet I'm still not praying not even one salat. But you're happy 60 years have gone without praying a salat. Unaware, ghafla. Allah says, Iqtaraba lin nasi hisabahum wa hum fi ghaflatim mu'ridun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Anbiya, the first ayah. He says, Iqtaraba lin nasi hisabahum. The hisab of mankind is coming very close to them. Every day that goes by, it is coming closer to the day that we have to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as it is coming closer and closer, Allah says, وَهُمْ فِي غَفْلَةِ مُعْرِدُونَ Mankind is still in their heedlessness. They are still in their own awareness, turning away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As you say, as you get older, you get more experience. But not for all. 
Some people they get older and older and older and still they are turning away from Allah. Even after knowing that I'm getting closer. Every year that pass I'm going closer to the grave. I reach 50, I reach 60, I reach 70 years, then I'm nearly there, as you could see. But how is my life in the dunya? My life in the dunya, I have not prepared anything for what I'm heading towards. There's one poet under this ayat in Surah Al Anbiya that says, An nasu fi ghaflati marihal maniyatu tathan. He says, Was man is in their ghafla, was human beings, they are in their heedlessness. And when we say heedlessness, they are busy. They know the term busy that we, we love to use. I'm too busy. <clears throat> I have so much of things to do. So you don't get time to pray. You don't get time to, to come to the masjid. You don't get time to read Quran. You don't get time to do no acts of ibadah because you're busy. So the, the poet he says, And now so feel of to him. Mankind is in that busyness. Is in that heedlessness. But the mill of death continues to grind. The mill of death continues to grind. It doesn't stop. So it continues. The angel of death is still doing his work. And the angel of death is come whenever your time reach. It is not going to say, I'm going to give you some more days so that you could get your act in order before I take your soul. When that time comes, the angel of death is going to take you how busy you are. So he says, that is ajab. That is even more amazing. So one is, one, what is amazing? Time going by. But what is even more amazing than that is how we are using our time. And time is such a thing that when it goes, it doesn't come back. When one week go away, you don't get back that week. That week has gone from your life forever. When that one year has gone, you can't get back that one year. So you need to use your time wisely. And then he says, وَصَعْبًا وَأَصْعَبًا What is difficult and what is even more difficult than that? He says, what is difficult is أَصَبْرُ in the masail. He says, what is hard and difficult is having sabr at the time of a calamity. That is something hard. And only those who are going through it will understand it. We could stand up and we could preach about it. But when you're actually going through it, then you understand the feelings of it. And as the Prophet says, true sabr, a sabr in the sadmat al ula, he says, true patience is that patience that come at the time of the calamity. As soon as that calamity hits you, that is the true patience. Like as soon as you hear someone that is, that is very dear to you pass away, we can tell you, you need to have supper. But at that time, how do you feel at that time when you hear of someone that you love passes away? For many, you can't control it. For many, you want to break up everything. You don't know what to do again. At that moment, he says, that is hard to have sober at that time because of the situation, because of the feelings. You start to think to yourself, how am I going to live with such a situation? How am I going to get out of such and such situation? But having sober is as, a, as Imam Shafi says, difficult, but that is what you need to do at that time. You need to have supper. So he says, having supper is hard, but what is even harder than having supper at a time of calamity? He says, Fawatu Thawab. He says, is allowing your blessings to go away for not having supper. That is even more difficult. So supper is hard, but if you are to act in a negative manner at that time and you throw away sabr, you throw sabr and patience out of the door. He says the amount of blessings you are allowing to go away from you, that is even more hard. But you don't realize how hard it is that what you have just done. Because when Allah brings a calamity in your life, 
when Allah puts you through a situation, it is because Allah wants to give you a lot of blessings. Allah wants to change you as an individual. So those trials that you are being given is to change you as an individual. Is to raise your rank higher in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But that is only if you treat that trials or that calamity with sabr. If you do not treat it with sabr, then you have wasted everything. As Allah says, إِنَّمَا يُوَفَّ الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابِ Allah says, Allah will give the rewards of the sabirun, of those who have patience, بِغَيْرِ حِسَابِ Without any reckoning. Without any tallying, just throwing blessings upon blessings. Not a count of you're, get, you're going to get 10 blessings because of this trial and this amount of blessings. No, when it comes to going through sabr, having sabr at those junctures in your life, Allah just blessings upon blessings without even counting it. And if you don't have sabr, you have just allowed all of that to be lost. So he says that is more difficult. And then he says, what is qareebun wa akram? What is near and what is even nearer than that? He says, as for what is qareeb, kullu ma tatamanna. He says, everything that you hope for is near. Everything that you hope for is near. So what, you, what are your plans for after Juma? That is near. After Juma, you're going to go and do whatever your plans are. Whatever you are planning for tomorrow, your hopes of doing tomorrow, that is near. By the time you know it, it is already tomorrow and you're going to do it. What are your plans for next year? That is also near. Even your desires for Jannah, it is also near because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Whilst you see it far, <clears throat> whilst you are seeing the day of judgment and Jannah to be far away, Allah says, Rahu qariba." We see it very near. It is something very near. So everything that you hope for is near. Everything that you plan and everything that you want, it is near. And he says, what is Aqrab? What is even nearer than that? He says, the thing that is nearer than that is al maut is death. Death is nearer than anything that you hope for. I know what of us hope for death, but death is even nearer than everything that we hope for. Because as we wake up this morning, no one of us knows if we're going to live through the day. While we have all our plans in the day, and we might be able to accomplish it. If it is near, what is even nearer is death, because that could come to you at any time. You could go out to your home in your vehicle, not knowing, and you get into an accident and you die. Without any sickness. Though we, we are so scared of disease and so scared of sickness, you could die naturally just like that. Death is near. And this is why we need to be prepared for it whenever it comes and however it comes and in which form it comes in. Because whatever we survive from, we still have to die after that sometime. We can't escape that. Qul in al mawta ladi tafiruna minhu fa inna hu mulaqikum as Allah tells us in Surah Al Jum'ah. Says the death that you are running away from. فَإِنَّهُ مُلَاقِيكُمْ Suddenly, it is going to meet you. The death we are running away from. We are all running away from death. This is not a hope. We don't hope for death, to die. We hope for everything else in the dunya. Everything else we hope. We hope we get to see our grandchildren. We hope to get to see our house completed. We hope to see our children graduate. We hope for everything. One thing we don't hope for, I hope that I'm going to die tomorrow, I hope I'm going to die next month. We don't hope for that. But that is nearer than everything that you hope for. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all. We need to be prepared for it whenever it comes. <clears throat> because when it, when it comes, if we like it or not, we have to go. Because we as Muslims, we have learned this from very small in Maktab growing up. 
part of our seven articles of faith is that you don't die before your time, neither can you die after your time. Always remember that. You cannot die before, you cannot die after. Whatever time Allah has decreed for you to die whilst you are in the womb of your mother. Allah had decreed that then. You weren't even in this world and that was already decreed. So you can't die before your time. Neither you cannot die after your time. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to prepare for it. And this is why the Prophet says, if you wake up in the morning, do not wait for the evening. Do as much good. So in case it comes, whenever it comes, you are ready. And this is how a Muslim's life should be. This is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Tuhfat al-mu'min al-maut. A gift for the believer is death. We fear it so much. <clears throat> we are quarreling and this and that because of being so scared of dying. But death is a gift for us. But we would be scared if we are not prepared for it. If we are playing around with our <coughs> duties to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yes, we would be scared for it. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the understanding <coughs> of this life that Allah has given to us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of our good deeds and enter us into his Jannah al firdaus Wa akhru da'wana an alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, in Ahmed, who wants to eat, who wants to cure, who wants to be, who wants to work for Ali, and I would be like him in Shuruli and Fisina, in Sayati Amalina, may I be love for the Lila, or may you live for the Hadiella, Washerola, Ila, Ila, Allah, Wahdu, La Sharikala, Washerona, Sayyidina, when I begin a Mullah and Mohammed in Salah, while he was Salah, for in Asakal Hadi, Tikitab, Allah, you are Salah Hadi, Hadi Mohammed in Salah, while he was Salah, Shuru Umori Mahtata, to have a Kula Mahtata in Bidar, Wakula Bidar in Dalal, Wakula Dalal in Finnar, Father will let me shake on the Rajiv, in the Law of Mala, Ikata, who is Saluna, and Nabi, Ya, you are Ladina Amir, Salu Ali, was Salim Mutaslima. اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد انت بالقلوب ودوائها وعافل أبدان شفائها والنور الأبصار وضيائها وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين مرضى اللهم أمن وأفضل البشر بعد الأنبياء بتحقيق رفيقه في الغار ونيس أبو بكر الصديق رضي الله عنه وشدهم في أمر الله أمر وأصدقهم حيان ثمان وقدرهم علي وفاتمة سيدة النساء يا أهل الجنة والحسن والحسين سيدة شباب يا أهل الجنة وحمزة أسر الله وأسد رسوله اللهم اكفر العباس والذي مكفرة ظاهرة وباتنة لا تغادر دنبا الله الله في أصحابي لا تتخذ قرد من بعدي فمن أحبهم فبحبي أحبهم ومن أبغضهم فبفقدي أبغضهم وخير أمتي قرني ثم الذين يلونهم ثم الذين يلونهم وسلطان ذل الله في الأرض من أهان سلطان الله في الأرض أهانه الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروني أذكركم واشكروا لي ولا تكفرون الله أكبر أقم الصلاة